he made a lot of conservatism. And the fact is that we 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 are right right now seeing that he's um, he, he, his way to coach is coming to an end. Welcome to the latest of our Anglo-Italian pod World Cup 22 preview shows. And this time we are focusing on perhaps a golden generation's last chance. De Bruyne, Lukaku and Courtois are used to winning trophies domestically, but can they finally do it internationally? Always everyone's dark horse. Can Belgium finally win the race? And to discuss this with me is football journalist Sasha Tavolieri. Sasha, how are you today? I'm fine. Thank you very much for the for the invitation. I'm really happy to be with you. So I'm fine. Really good. Enjoy. Uh, we, we will enjoy the moment, I'm sure. I think so. I think so. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. Um, and just quickly, where are you calling us from? Are you in Belgium? Yes. Yes, of course. Here is my office um, in the south east of uh, south east of uh, of Belgium. So wow, nice. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to you from there. Beautiful. Good. Well, some authentic Belgian chat. I'm looking forward to it. So um, we we start all these interviews um, just by starting with how did Belgium get to the tournament? What is their form like? How convincing are they looking heading into the tournament? That's, the situation is quite complex because we, 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 we came in a situation between, you know, an end of cycle and start of new generation. So we, ha we have a lot of good talents, great talents uh, with a high potential um, that are coming on the first team. We can see it with uh, Amadou Nana. We can mm -hmm. see it with Charles Kittelar, who is uh, playing quite well uh, for his first season at Milan. Um, we, we have talents that are coming in the first team to be uh, important in the future. But we have also this ex-future golden generation, as mm -hmm. everybody called it, that came a bit uh, older and older. So it came good for some people. You see that um, uh, the more um, uh, Kevin De Bruyne is, play is playing at Manchester City, the more he is good. So this is yes. good for us. Yeah. The same for the same for Courtois. Uh, we we have the same uh, good good energy like this. But the fact is that we we have the same question that we had in the first time with uh, with Roberto Martinez. So we have a, a real problem with our defense that is becoming mm -hmm. becoming older and older. And of course, we have a, a real problem with the left back because we don't have any left back. We have someone who is keeping the place of. Um, to the left uh, mm -hmm. of the defense midfield on this um, this this uh, three four two one uh, that uh, that is uh, set in place by uh, by Martinez, but we don't have someone who is really able to do the the, the, the position as a natural position. Mm -hmm. Understand? And then we have the same problem as for two years. We have our biggest player, the captain named by our um, our coach. Roberto Martinez, and then Hazard, who is not playing. This is, of course, the third main trouble that we have to face. Well, I think Eden Hazard is a fascinating one because since he left Chelsea, it feels like nothing's really gone his way. And I feel like now for Belgium, two of your key players, as you said, Eden Hazard and Lukaku, aren't really getting games, aren't really hitting form. Is this a concern for Belgium? And who are the players that you expect could maybe take their place. I know like um, a pender in France is doing quite yes. well, but do you think he can really take on the shoulders of Lukaku? Like, I don't think Batshuayi can do it. Like who are the no. players you think that can come You're in? right. You're right. You're right. No, no, he's not able for the moment to, to be a real uh, first, you know, a first mm. player in this team because um, everybody know that um, it's not really significant. The fact that Belgium is third or second, I think in the ranking yeah. FIFA, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. You know, it's it's a bit of a joke this kind of ranking because it it doesn't say anything. But when you are you are placed there, it's important to have also players that can be, get the um, um, the status uh, mm -hmm. of a player that uh, and of a player that can be in this team. And this is not the for, for the moment for uh, for the moment. This is not the case for uh, for a panda. And this mm -hmm. is just obvious. You know, he we as you as you if you see the the matches that he did. With um, with uh, excellence, he is playing really well. Mm -hmm. But he, th there is for for the moment a lack of um, kind of I don't know. In French, we say we say justice. You know, okay. he's 
He's, he has to he has to play with um, a bit more um, facilities, uh, okay. technical facilities, and he he, uh, he is a bit like a, a player who runs a lot and goes right. straight to the goal and don't see a bit the the opportunities, the space that he can that that he can give for his partner and something like this. So a bit of a lack of intelligence of game. Mm -hmm. This is what uh, what what I think deserve his his game for the moment. But mm -hmm. okay, he's young. He will he will improve. So for the moment, of course, the situation of Eden Hazard to came back to your question yep. is really really important um, and co is concerning everyone. Uh, to be honest, uh, because um, we don't have a real substitute because Martinez placed a lot of uh, belief on him. Mm -hmm. And the fact is that he's saying, okay, we have um, uh, Hazard, why do we will choose a substitute? The fact is that uh, it's two years, two years long that we see that he don't have the level, mm -hmm. saying, saying the truth. He don't have the level to be in the first 11 for the moment. So we have to, we have to find a way. And he yeah. didn't want it, you know, and this is a problem. This is a real problem. Um, and we we, we he's... have a substitute, to be honest. We have a substitute. We have yeah. someone who can take the place and that you pretty, I think, love because he is also really um, loved by a lot of big teams in Premier League. It's Leandro Trossard, of course. Uh, of course. Brighton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I think you're right. His directness and his, his ability to dribble with the ball really is like he's tearing teams apart in the Premier League and he's really coming into his own. I really hope he can kind of get a place um, for Belgium. But coming into that, or leading on from that, Roberto Martinez. Now, he's the man in charge. He's been in charge for a while. He's a manager that a lot of people have not really been conv convinced by. I think yes. he's never really been able to coach defense, but he's been in the Belgium uh, it, he's been in the Belgium job for a very long time. How do you feel about Martinez? Do you think he's got the ability to coach this Belgium team uh, through the tournament? First of all, I think that there is something that we can discern to uh, to to Roberto Martinez is the price of the super um director technical national director because he made a lot of work for our national academy brings a lot of professionalism bring uh, all his philosophy with the the, the technical um dispositive so the, the technical system that he that he puts uh on so with the the three four two one um mm -hmm. on all the all the young teams um uh, of the national team and he bring Yes, a sort of legacy that is really, okay. really important for us. And it's something that uh, someone cannot imagine if you are not in Belgium. You see that okay. there is a lot of Bel uh, Belgian talents that, that are going to improve their level mm -hmm. and, and, and going to be better and better even every year. And this is good because he it's and he's one part of it because he came and he gives the chance to young to, to young players to came and to adapt. Uh, on uh, at the, um, the national team and to be good and he he work also with with his his network to bring okay. some players at the higher level um in the premier league uh, in liga and something like this so he, he he he's really giving all of his uh, competence for the the interest of the national team belgium as technical director he is perfect so i, I have okay. nothing bad to say about it but as a coach He's a conservator. Yeah. He's he, he he made a lot of conservatism, and the fact is that we 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 are right right now seeing that he's um he, he his way to coach is coming to an end. You understand? Mm -hmm. It's coming to an end, and we don't have to um um to 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 to, to think a, a lot uh, to understand that. He loves the player that brings uh, Belgium to the third place of uh, Russia 2018, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. and 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 he he wants to to bring a maximum of players that that made this story. But it's not possible. You have no. to understand that things change. That players yeah. are not in the same level. And if we we stay with the same, if he stays with the same view, I'm really afraid of what is becoming. You mm -hmm. know, with the with the work club, we. We have to wake up. We have to wake yeah. up, and and he has also to to put himself into question to say, okay, we have, for example, Archer Theat that is playing as a defender mm -hmm. at uh, at Rennes. He's doing really well for his first season. He yeah. made a great season last season with uh, Bologna. Yeah, Why? he was, he was outstanding in Serie A. He was one of the best defenders in the league last year, I think. 
yeah. of course why, why this guy is not in the first 11 why this mm -hmm. guy is is i don't know behind a player like jan vertonghen who is of course the the, the grandfather of the team who has more than 100 selection i understand um we we have to respect all, all his career all of that blah 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 it's good yeah, but yeah, yeah. the fact is that we don't we don't have um uh, the, the choice because this player is in that moment that we are speaking about not in the level for mm -hmm. being in the world cup so we yeah. are going to face a big problem now and it, and i don't understand why he or don't want to 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 face this problem and to find a to find a solution or yeah. he he seems to not willing to give the keys of the solution to people so yeah. we don't understand where he wants to go with that kind of defense you know i i was also watching this weekend the the match of toby aldo Weard, uh who plays okay. for tottenham and that you maybe you, you saw a lot and you, you know good but toby to be honest toby it's a good player but he's older and he he made a lot of mistakes mistakes yeah. and now he's playing in, in the first division of Belgium, and when I see how he behave on the mm. on the pitch, because I saw the matches of the first Belgium division, I'm I'm really surprised to see that he will maybe be in the first eleven of this team. You have mm. to change everything. You have a player that Leicester choose to uh, sub, to to be a sub of Wesley Fofana. Where, yeah, uh, why he's not in the first eleven? You have yeah. to you, you have to understand that uh, for the moment, I think he's one of the best defender of Ligue 1 for the moment. Mm -hmm. Theat is not in the first eleven. Uh, no. You 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 start with a, a young kid um, the who who has I think uh, nineteen years old, something like this. Who's called uh, Zeno de Bast? He did good, but okay. you make you make a lot of mistakes of coaching with him during the match, the last match that the Red Devils, uh, Belgium Red Devils, plays mm -hmm. against. Uh, um Holland, you know, Netherlands. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. And and he's um responsible of the goal that gives the victory of our enemy, you know. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. but he did a really good match. How do you will take this player back to your team? How what mm -hmm. how do you will manage so that he can be good and so that he can be at the level? Seeing and knowing that his current club on the leg yeah. is in, in the entire crisis for the moment so yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is the situation of our defense that's why i'm afraid yeah well it's and the thing is the world cup is not the time to kind of be experimenting and trying things out like that was what qualification in the nation's league is for to try these things and see if it works so it's it is concerning to see how martinez, martinez is going to deal with it but moving on we need to go to the players that you think that people who aren't familiar with Belgium or maybe haven't watched them that much, who are the players that we should be keeping an eye out for to excite us in this year's World Cup? Oh, um, surely Amadou um, mm -hmm. because uh, he's he's making uh, amazing progress at yeah. every matches when you see the Premier League with Everton, you see that he gets the confidence of uh, of Frank Lampard, and he is amazing. You know, he's yeah. just winning a lot of more more uh, duels. Um, he's he's face to face. He's uh, really a, a monster. His impact physically is something good, more mm -hmm. than good. And yes, he's the player that can take a place into the first eleven. That that has also uh, no other concurrent because he has okay. a huge profile. You understand? Mm -hmm. He is a big player, really tall, uh, physical. Um, able to play with his foot, but also really good when you when he has to to play um, to play with his um, with his head. So head yeah, to head yeah. is good. You know, I, I think I think we need to have this kind of player in the first eleven. This is for me sure because we have a lot of players that are bringing something a bit the same. You know, we have Witzel, okay. we have Ilomans, we have yeah. De Bruyne, and I suggest that we keep the best of these three. You know. So that we can g get and let the space to um, to Amadou to be to be uh, a bit more uh, yes uh, different uh, in this midfield because it's a really really different profile mm -hmm. and they're coming eh? when you see when you see uh, for example Southampton with uh, Romeo Romeo Lavia he's yeah. only uh, 18 years old but these kind of new profiles on the in the Belgium national team are coming so midfield really defensive midfielder who are able to 
to give a bit of impact. Mm -hmm. And with Amadou Nana, we bring some someone we didn't have since uh, the famous World Cup 2018 because uh, um, he left its uh, profile as Fellaini. Okay. Because yeah, 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 know, yeah. We didn't have with since since that moment uh, a new profile uh, mm -hmm. that is a bit similar as Fellaini, and we bring it with Amadou, and Amadou has something more because he is yeah. even more technical than yeah. him, and he is quite good also when he has to to um, to to fight in the air and to win mm -hmm. the, the some some um, some duels. So he's good, he's good. I'm I'm, I'm thinking he will, he will be the surprise. Very nice. I was just say he's a little bit more polished than Fellaini, I think, but he's <laughs> yes. doing he's doing very very well at Everton. I think being coached by one of the best box to box mid midfielders of all time is not going to do him any harm, really. Um, but finally, our last question before we go to the quick fire predictions: um, What would be a successful tournament for Belgium this year? Do you think? Um, you 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 think you're you're asking for my prediction, right? Uh, well, well, just no. Just what do you think makes a successful tournament? Not if you think it will happen or not. What yeah. is a successful tournament for Belgium? I think I think that the rival, the, that it will be uh, linked to the the new talents that are mm -hmm. uh, bringing their yes their path the the their, their magic uh, into the team. This this will be for me the main key to bring okay. someone and to say okay we have this talent and this talent is is improving his. His um, his level with the national team and thanks to the World Cup came to be I don't know one of the the, the player that gives us and gives us more certitude nice. to be sure more sure of our players and what we are able to to have in the future and this is really what 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 I expect I expect this from Amadou Nana I expect yeah. this from Charles de Ketela I expect yeah. this from um World fast and I expect this from um uh, Arthur Theat. This is nice. the, the the four I'm really expecting that they they say okay now we have another level we are really sitting in this team and we are not going to put out to be put out okay very nice good nice perfect Sasha so very quickly I'm just gonna get some predictions for the World Cup so who do you think will be lifting the trophy by the end of November which team do you think is gonna win? Mm, you know, I'm I'm thinking about Brazil and about the Netherlands because when I saw Netherlands with the uh, against uh, against Belgium, I saw okay, this team is collectively able of doing anything, anything yeah. good because he they 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 have a defense who is more than strong. They have players uh, offensively that are collectively able to increase their level during the tournament. And they have a really good midfield, you know, mm -hmm. or, and, and compact midfield. So they, yeah, yeah, yeah. they are for me a, a quite surprising name, but they are they, they can be the the yes the champions. They, they can be the champions. And Brazil, of course, because uh, when you see the team, is just eleven stars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's incredible. It's, even even the defense and goalkeeper, every single position is ridiculous. Nice. Um, okay, now you can predict where do you think Belgium will get in the tournament? Quarter final. Okay. I think, nice. I, That's not I think, bad. I think Belgium will will go out of his group. So mm -hmm. I don't know if you know it, but we will face Croatia, yeah. uh, Canada, and Mo Morocco. So we will be out of uh, this group we will be i think first uh, of the group and then as always we will be uh, we will do a good match a really yeah. good match in out uh, of, of of this group and we will um, we will go to to, to the quarter final but when it came to the high level with, the, mm -hmm. with when you need a higher defense that became a problem yeah. and that's why i think they cannot be and they they cannot go higher for me Okay, nice. Um, which player do you expect to get the golden boot? Who do you think is going to be the top scorer of the tournament? This one's a bit more difficult, but who do you think is going to be the top scorer? Uh, it would be it would be more easy if Alan plays, you know. Yeah, that's, that's true. Case. That's very true. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's not the case, unfortunately. Um, I would say um, Benzema, to be honest. Okay, nice. Karim Benzema is on fire. He will yeah. play the last World Cup of his career. He is uh -huh. right now going to say, okay, I'm I'm building history. So, yes, it will be Benzema for me. Very nice. Okay, just two more. The dark horse of the tournament, the, th the team that you think pe will surprise people. Denmark. 
Denmark nice. without without yeah. any doubts. You know, Denmark is amazing. When you saw the matches of Denmark, they are building, and this is really if I can make a bit uh, a, a little coma. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, will, I will tell it to you. Um, for me, this is really. Um, a sort of um, challenge that the Belgium national team has to has to uh, face because I don't know if you see it, but it's there. Is, there are no stars. There are good. I th I think if you give a, um, a note to every player, there are every seven or seven point five yeah. on ten yeah, yeah. players. You know, they are not nine. They are not mm -hmm. nine point five. They are seven, seven, seven. Yes, seven point five. And when you see it, it's collectively really homogene. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. really interesting to see because in every position everyone understands what they are going to do and everyone does it for the group everyone yeah. does it for the common sense of the team mm -hmm. they are understanding uh, as a unity and and, and 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 it's amazing to see to be mm -hmm. honest i love watching um denmark because i know that we will have spectacle and it will it will be really interesting in the point of view of, of the game and mm -hmm. also you see that everyone knows what they have to do and there is no ego. And this yeah. is the main problem in Belgium is that there is a lot of ego. And okay, if, we, right. if we find a way to be like her, li yeah. like them, sorry, in the, um, in, the, in the future, this is a way for being even better and better because we have the quality to be mm -hmm. better than them. But when you see Denmark, it's, a, it's, it's just impressive. Yeah. No, it is, and it's again like we've seen team spirit through the, from them through every tournament they've they've got through. Like they're always very impressive, very capable team. I think you're right. I like that prediction. And finally, the star player, the player that's going to announce themselves on the world stage this tournament. I would say Phil Foden. Oh, I like that. Okay, nice, nice. I would I say like Phil that. Foden because I, he is making um, giant steps. Mm -hmm. for being one of the best players in the world in the next years. Um, the job that makes uh, Pep Guardiola around him is just amazing, wholesome. And um, yes, he is a player who is always, always uh, really important. I, I don't know. He retaining all the advice that we gave to him to be better and better and yeah, better. Yeah, yeah. And I don't... I, if, if you see the level that had um, Phil Foden two years ago and right now, it's just impressive. You know, it's mm -hmm. uh, we, we, you don't recognize the player. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. As, as simple as that. So when you see um, how, how he is behaving, maybe we will see what he will do in the in the next weeks. But he will really, really be important, really important for England for me. Nice. I like it. Well, as an England fan, I really hope he steps up because I'm very excited about him. Very excited about him. Thank you, Sasha. That was fantastic. For our listeners, um, if they want to follow you on socials, see your work, uh, where can they find you? Yes, they can find me on Twitter um, mm -hmm. with the with the, the same uh, advice, uh, the same name. So at Sasha Tavalieri. Nice. Uh, S A C H A Tavalieri. Um, and also on my YouTube when I'm producing contents and something like this. Sometimes uh, I have I made some movies that are subtitled in English, so people okay. that can so maybe that that wants to see can see it and read. Uh, of course, it's in French, but it's mm -hmm. a, there is a subtitle, so they can see it uh, easily. And uh, for the rest, yes, I think it will be um, it will be uh, on my on my Instagram. It's the same, Sasha Tabellary. Perfect. Okay, well, thank you for joining us, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe to keep up with the rest of our World Cup preview videos. And again, thank you, Sasha. That was great. It's a big, big pleasure. Thank you to you to, to the invitation.